Right. So my intent here is really to provide visibility and overview and just kind of a flavor of the EDM Council and the value it brings to our members and also to the market at large. I'd like to start, though, quickly with a quick question. How many here prior to this event was aware of the EDM Council? Okay. How many here are members of the EDM Council? Great. How many were not aware that they were members of the EDM Council until today? Right. Uh, my intent here is to speak to both audiences, right? If you are a member currently, thank you. And, and you're really an important, impactful piece of this organization and industry at large. My ask of you is to spread the word within your organization. If you just found out today, know this, that as a member, all of your employees have access to the EDM Council. It's an enterprise-wide membership. So the more that they know, the more we know, and the more impact we can have on the marketplace. If you aren't a member, please join, right? This is your organization. This is the industry's organization. We're just the fortunate facilitators to bring this to life. And our, our charter really is to elevate the importance and the practice of data management at the organizational level. So we're gonna cover a couple of those things, but I cheated and asked for the asks up front and not at the end. So if you're a member, spread the word, if you're not, please join. And hopefully some of this information will help you. Um, we're gonna go by it quickly. We've got a lot to cover, but it'll give you a flavor of where we are. Uh, first, the most important to start off with is to introduce my colleagues and the Canadian force here at, based in Toronto and in Canada, uh, Paul Childerhouse and Stella. I don't know where Stella is at the moment. Oh, get on up here, Stella, no hiding. Um, um, we are a global organization, and we have now a really strong focus on developing regional flavor and regional focus and value at the member and the market level. So here in Canada, Paul and Stella are the point for everything that we do. And if you don't know Paul already, then you probably know Stella, because between the two, I think they know everybody one way or the other in this marketplace. So we're really fortunate to have this team and the rest of the organization supporting um, this market and the market at large. Uh, real quick, we are a trade association, global. We're focused uniquely on data management and even more uniquely data management at the organizational level, right? We're not about technology. We're about how do you make your data trusted through policy, people, procedure, best practices, things of that nature. Uh, taking a quick look at our industry, this is a snapshot of up, upwards of 380 members that we have currently. And I will say here locally, uh, Paul, if you want to highlight any of the Canadian groups at all, but um, you'll see now our Canadian representation. Areas of advocacy, this is kind of the, the boxes of what we do, right? Uh, best practices, those of you familiar with us are probably familiar with the DCAM. You may be familiar with the CDMC, and you may be familiar with our benchmark survey, which is really well received globally. Driving standards, similarly with the DCAM and the processes that we take out uh, and bring to the marketplace as the voice of the market. Training and certification, we'll touch on that here in a moment, but as we know, it's really about education and culture to build that organization that's gonna be sustainable in data management. Research and benchmarking based off of our frameworks through our surveys and you'll hear through one of our programs, we're really driving to bringing more information to the marketplace and to our members so they can better evaluate themselves and evaluate how things are going within the market, within their industry. Regulatory engagement, uh, we aren't lobbyists, but we end up being kind of the voice and the mirror for the industry to the lobbyists, I mean, not to, to, the, to the regulators, right? Really important, not our job to lobby, but it is our job to inform and hear from the regulators so that we can make practical, reasonable, and business-directed activities and best practices as voiced through the membership. Uh, and finally, networking, I don't wanna leave that out, right? Community is really a big thing about this group. We all know data can be a lonely job at times, right? Um, but knowing that you have a number of colleagues, not just locally, but globally, that are facing the same challenges 
the same hurdles, and actually achieving a lot more than what you realize is an important thing. So I think you'll find connections individually as well as organizationally, the networking and community piece is really critical and a real value of the marketplace. Okay, real quick, what we provide, and I'm only gonna cover a couple of these things, but these are a number of the offerings that we provide to our members in the industry at large, right? These are offerings created by you. And that's why it's critical that we have everyone participating and everyone joining the organization because it's your voice, your vision, and your view that brings us to the best practices and the tools that you need to advance your organization. Uh, I'm just gonna hop, uh, highlight the data management, the cloud, the special interest groups we'll talk about with Stella, and our global recognition programs. But the idea here is we have a lot that you should be aware of and you should be leveraging if you aren't already, and a lot that would be of value to your organization if you aren't a part of us today, right? So um, real quick, one of the big things, and we've heard this through all of the uh, panels and we've heard it here day to day, it's, and I think John said, you know, um, data people are just terrible marketers, right? One of the things we're working on is being able to quantify and recognize outcome and achievement which is sorely missing in data management at the organizational level, right? There's a real gap there. But additionally, we're creating recognition and credentials for both individuals, for organizations, and even our partners uh, to help bring visibility, awareness, and that much differentiation for them in the marketplace. So know that we are very keen on making sure that the world knows what you're doing and how you're doing it and what you've achieved in a way that's recognized from a globally recognized um, industry agnostic trade association. Pretty proud about that. Um, we touched early, earlier about the DCAM. I won't go through it in depth, but I will tell you this is the foundation, kind of the framework for much of the things that we're doing, especially when I talk about some recognition programs I'll, I'll be getting to in a second. But the idea here, best practice, common knowledge, common vocabulary, and a consistent way to measure and understand how your business is doing is really a critical piece of business. What we've done, um, well, let me just get to this as well. So we are now also in the, in the midst of creating our version three of the ECAM. Uh, that'll be out probably into this year. Uh, we have, as you can see, eight active working groups right now. We'd love all of you to be part of it and you're welcome to do so. It's really been a fascinating thing with all the insights, all the trends we're talking here about what and how we capture within these frameworks to make the DCAM um, more relevant than ever before. Okay, so to the recognition piece, very quickly. In essence, what we have done is create a recognition program, which we've called the Data Excellence Program. And the problem is this, there is no formal recognition of data management capability and achievement at the organizational level. It's just a hole in the marketplace. So when no, no one knows how to define it, how to measure it, and so therefore no one recognizes it or cares about it, right? We're looking to change that, and we're doing that with this data excellence program. And the concepts, the concept, where'd I go? How do we go back? Um, so that's it. So the concept is to create this recognition program that um, emphasizes that data management is a program, not a project, right? It's ongoing and needs to be sustained to be successful. That is measurable and defined so that you un understand what's going on in our working groups. The end client or the organizations all said, look, thanks for the recognition, but I need to tell my execs a story. I need to know what the journey is and I need to be able to measure it and quantify it so I can tell them why I need the funds and the people that I need for the next two and three and four years. This is the first tool out there to help with that. It may not be perfect, but it's there. Um, and you'll see that we've got some acceptance to that currently. This, I'm not gonna go through it. This is the rubric uh, for the data excellence program. Basically five elements, assessments, training, um, uh, process improvement, improvement, planning, and what we're doing with this program is for all participants, they're gonna contribute their benchmark score off of our assessments, and we're gonna create the only real-time data management benchmark repository. 
So while our survey is really highly accepted in time as we grow scale, you'll be able to look at a consistent measurement of scores of assessments around the globe. How's your business doing? How's your department doing? How's your region doing? How's your competitors doing? How's the market doing? Lots of work that comes with this. This is why we need everyone's help, but it's a pretty significant tool that everyone's asking for. Uh, just as an idea, we kicked off this program in February. Uh, we have a baseline of what we call founders, which is our pilot organizations. Oops. Uh, and it's growing by the day. This program um, requires the organization to have a uh, partner as essentially its third party representative to acknowledge that all have been met. And we built this program to be very low touch, very low and very minimally invasive because it's a recognition program, not a credential program, not a certification program, but it's a process by which you can tell your people, your organization and the marketplace, I'm not touching it there, um, how you're doing and what you're doing with it, right? Uh, Paul, do you have, um, we've got some Canadian representation. Let's see, look, I'm not even touching it. I am, I keep going back. You wanna, um, what do you want me to do? Something? Yeah, we got um, NREP. Does anyone see that? <laughs> um, Ehad, can I, um, can I take a minute of your time and just ask what, you know, I don't know, we'll give you a minute or two. Or Palash, do you want to, do you want him to do it? All right. Just, this is unscripted, right? I just thought I'd do it. Uh, all right. you're, you're better to speak to what it is you did to uh, to get the Interact seal up there. Yeah, I know. Sure. Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, I've, I've partnered with uh, the EDM council even prior to my time at, uh, at Interact and always found there's, there's value in uh, the best practices that they have. It's very, uh, I find tactical. There are other frameworks and models out there that kind of give you an overview of, you know, data management and, and uh, different um, frameworks and disciplines, but I find it's very tactical and actionable in terms of uh, what, what DCAM and the EDM council uh, provide. Um, and really, we we uh, dedicated funds to make sure that we had. Yeah, sorry. All right, I yeah, know. All all good. All good. Um, yeah, we we made sure that we uh, dedicated at least you know a certain amount of people. We had uh, quite a few people on the data team that get trained uh, and get their DCAM certification. Uh, we also uh, made sure that we uh, make a commitment to DCAM and continuously measuring our data um, framework, our data management framework from end to end. Um, so really, again, partnering closely, making sure that we train people in the organization, raise awareness across the organization, and also ensure that we're continuously monitoring and measuring. And um, I guess to your earlier point, it's it's you know something that we've embedded in the organization. No different than having you know a finance department, HR department. Our data team has been around uh, for a while, led by uh, Palash, who's uh, an awesome la leader and also very data centric and data focused, and has a lot of great experience. And he's been making a lot of great strides within the organization too. Just working with our uh, execs and making sure that data is always uh, top of mind within the organization. So, yeah. Say, uh, uh, any, anything else, or? Well, uh, no, that was good. Yeah, that was very good. Um, <laughs> the, um, I mean, that uh, I think for, for many of us in the room too, when we look at that brand, the interact brand, and we think of, um, critical infrastructure in Canada, um, and how that drives every small business, every merchant, uh, all of us with our taps and debit cards, et cetera, um, with the open banking on the horizon. So I think, I mean, I don't want to minimize it at all because I think from a global perspective, right, the, the rails that run Interac are uh, the lifeline of so many businesses um, here. So it's, it's a great, great, great moment. Um, and I know there are others in the room here with other uh, great Canadian corporations uh, that are looking at the designation as well. So um, next year we'll have many more Canadian logos up there. Um, thanks, Ehad. Kyle, are you still... Do you want me to run the clicker? Yes. <laughs> you try it. You try it for a minute. All right. Uh, so again, um, our, our, uh -huh, our first um, data excellence uh, participant here in the Canadian market. Congratulations and thank you very much. Um, and hope you can help us lead the charge here as well. Okay. Uh, similarly, nice. If you weren't aware, we have a, we had this is the well, I just referred to as our data 
framework. We have a cloud framework that was just released a couple of years ago. And the quick story here is, you can see it. Um, this is a industry collaboration of a very unique and very specific um, framework to help uh, accelerate the success um, of your transformation into the cloud. Go ahead, Paul. Give you a quick picture of the framework itself. I won't go through it. This is all available. In fact, this is available um, to anybody, not just members. So you can find this on our website as well. Uh, but the idea here is to create that framework um, and automated controls to ensure that you can protect and enable your critical data in the cloud. Um, currently within this program, we do have certifications on the, on the vendor level and you'll see that uh, Google and Microsoft are currently certified. AWS has been assessed in this process uh, and Snowflake has been involved as well. We have two others that are about to come to bear from a certification standpoint, um, one of which is Mr. Ku here with Informatica. Um, and these are really critical elements and these are thought leaders to help us drive this program um, that advances the entire kind of data management world. To that end, um, we are currently in the process of creating a similar recognition program for this cloud data management framework. It's in process now. If people are interested in it, I'm actually vetting it right this very program right now to get insight and feedback from the organizations to see where the value is and what we've missed and what we can refine. Uh, but we hope to launch this at the end of this month or early next month um, in a pilot phase. So know that we have a lot on the, on the horizon for our members and the marketplace at large. With that, I'm going to turn it over um, to Stella uh, to talk to you about kind of our community infrastructure, right? Our, our, our special interest groups uh, and the great work that we're doing there. Stella? Can you guys hear me? Okay, that's very loud. <laughs> so just very quickly, um, we have a couple of special interest groups. I uh, recently launched the data risk uh, special interest group, which I will touch on. Um, my background is in risk management, so I recently joined the council and uh, I found out they didn't have, you know, one in, in the risk side. And for me, risk is runs across everything. So this is a very interesting working group that we've uh, created. So if you're interested, please um, let me know and or I guess we can go to the next. Sure. Uh, yeah. I can do, but okay. So uh, I'll talk about the ESG data one. We they just released a playbook, right? So take a look at the website. Very uh, good information. So maybe I, I will. So I just again just recently joined the council. So I'm like, how? <laughs> um, I think the only way, the other one that I would highlight the um, asset data management for asset management. So um, there's probably a few banks in the room here uh, on the wealth side asset management side. I think this is an area, this was largely driven out of an event two years ago down in uh, uh, investment ops conference down in Florida. And I was down there and some of others from the council and it was all investment management operations folks. And they, like John said, or Kyle said, they saw the logos of the member firms that are part of the council and they had no idea. And these are all folks that are toiling away in investment operations. So coming out of that meeting, uh, we put together a, a special interest group, a STEERCO. I believe there's probably 15, 16, 17 uh, large asset management firms, John, that are part of it. So uh, this is a new and emerging one, certainly here in Canada, um, you know, across within the banks or outside of the banks. The, the special interest groups are also opportunities if you're with if you're independent or you're with an organization that's not currently part of the council you're more than welcome to to reach out and look for opportunities to um, participate uh, within the working groups uh, that are out there so they're they're a great great way to get a kind of a, a view into it and and these are well structured there's charters there's steering committees there's working groups and they are usually running on a bi-weekly basis um, so I'll stop there and Okay, Stella, this is what you've already touched upon. You can you um, tell them a little bit too about your own? Sure. 
Yeah. So again, as I mentioned, my background is in risk management. So currently chairman of the board for the Risk Management Association, if any of you have heard of it. Um, And my role there really has been to build out the community within risk uh, professionals at the uh, financial services. And so um, it very much complements what the work I'm doing here with uh, EDM Council. And I just think that, you know, there's so many synergies. And as I've come on to this role, I'm now expanding engagement throughout the organizations more on the risk side, right? And but if you're interested in joining, please let me know. And um, yeah. This is the, if you're interested in joining any of these, please take a picture. Um, it should redirect you to the EDM Connect website uh, and then, yeah. Sure. So training. Okay. So the, the first so in my first week when I joined the council, I actually had the pleasure of uh, going with Scotiabank. Scotiabank uh, brought us in to do in-house training. Um, it was both the risk side and uh, the data side. So it was a great compliment because I actually started my career at Scotia in risk management. So, um, you know, if you guys are interested in doing in-house uh, dedicated classes, please let us know. We also do e-learning, so virtual training as well. You know, you can go at your own pace. And then instructor-led, which is a two-day um, session. So I will say the e-learning, you can learn at your own pace, and it's about five hours condensed versus the instructor-led. It is two days, uh, but you can ask questions, and it's more interactive, right? So these are the open virtual classes. So um, take a look if you're interested in participating, whether it's uh, DCAM or CDMC, these are the upcoming dates for uh, virtual two-day cl- classes. Yeah. So just a little bit more about the training that we do, certification programs to um, different levels of classes. And we'll share all of this with you, but we do have an extensive uh, list of classes that you guys can take, again, virtual. And yep, EDM Connect, if you guys want to take a look, if you haven't already and you're members of the EDM Council, please join EDM Connect, right? You guys get a ton of resources there. There's That's where you can build out your community. You can meet other members. Um, so you would just hit sign in and you'd create a profile through there. Um, Guest as well can join, yes. 